Hey, welcome to another episode of this State of the Church video podcast. And thank you so much for joining in. This is part of a series of 12 to 15 minute videos laying out where we are, um, where we're heading, and how we're getting in there. In other words, our current reality, our vision, and, and our strategy. So far, we've, we've covered the first two chapters, current reality and vision, where we are, where we're headed. And this episode starts our chapter on strategy. How are we going to get from where we are to where we're heading? How are we gonna become a house of prayer that builds a church without walls, that's part of a movement to see the number of Jesus apprentices in Central PA double by the year 2030, in the process catalyzing a next generation of missionaries, leaders, and Jesus-shaped disciples. So let me start by telling you how we're not going to get there. We're not going to get there by doing church the same as we've always done it. If we do church the same as we've been doing, we'll get what we've been getting. We aren't going to get there by having the best Sunday morning worship gatherings in Central PA. Most of the people we want to reach aren't going to show up on a Sunday morning. Every decade young, younger than me has more and more negative perceptions of the church, and they trust people like me, pastors, less and less. But here's the deal. Jesus still draws a crowd. This isn't a problem with Jesus. Did you know that according to an in-depth, recent in-depth Barna study, over half of Gen Z teens are motivated to learn more about Jesus? In fact, here's a conclusion that David Kinneman, a Barna leader, drew from the study, the same study. It was broader than just next-gen teens. He writes that though religious affiliation and church attendance continue to decline, spiritual openness and curiosity are on the rise. Across every generation, he said, and in fact, we see an unprecedented desire to grow spiritually, a belief in a spiritual, supernatural dimension, and a belief in God or a higher power. Unprecedented rise in the desire to grow spiritually, coupled with a continued decline in church attendance. So how do we reach people with significant spiritual desire and an interest in church who won't come to church? <laughs> we scatter well. We scatter what? We take church to them. A church without walls, a house of prayer for every neighborhood, Jesus living on every street, G church happening everywhere Jesus shows up. You you've heard me say this multiple times in the last 30 plus months. In the years to come, it's going to be more important how well we scatter than it is how well we gather. If we want to double the number of Jesus apprentices in Central PA by 2030, we need to scatter. Wow, we need to take responsibility for where we live and work and play. Now, let me hit a handful of scriptures so that you can see I'm not really suggesting something radically out of the box new, but, but rather just kind of going back to some old truths in new ways. Truths about why we're here. I mean, let's start with Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. In, in the fair, paraphrase, the message Here's, here's how it goes. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bears, these are Jesus' words to us. If I make you light bears, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. And now that I've put you on a hilltop on a light stand, shine, keep open house, be generous with your lives, and by opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, our generous Father in heaven. You know, wherever you're at right now, driving in your home, wherever you're at, look, look around. If you're home, look outside your door. Imagine your neighborhood, your workplace, your team, your classroom, or residence hall, and and, and now say that with me, like, like a little liturgy. In the darkest corner of life, say it with me, I am the light of the world. When life seems out of control, say it with me, I am the light of the world. When people all, all around are afraid and depression lurks in the invisible places and, and your neighbor just needs a friend, say it again, I am the light of the world. See, to bring light to the darkness, we need to scatter well. Now, let me go back from Matthew 5 to Isaiah 58, one of my favorite passages in the Old Testament. This, this metaphor of light has been on the heart of God since the very beginning of time. Listen to the words of Isaiah in chapter 58. Speaking to God's people, he says, Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, I'm here. 
Then your light will rise in the darkness. Your night will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He'll satisfy your needs. You'll be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and be called the repair of broken walls, the restore of streets with dwellings. See, what every neighborhood, workplace, and school needs is for the light to burst forth in the darkness. It needs people who found healing for their brokenness, people who have God's glory watching their backs. It it needs people who can get God's attention, whose lives are like well-watered gardens. Our neighbors don't need perfect neighbors. They just need light. So we need to scatter well. And, And let's be honest, the church in America for as long as I can remember, has focused more on how we gather than in how we scatter. And you're the light of the world. You have a front yard mission, the second greatest commandment in all of scriptures, love your neighbor. Jesus' final blessing over us was, as the Father sent me in the same way I'm sending you. So go, go, go. (laughs) See, here's the principle. Sunday is halftime, it's not the game. Monday is the proof of Sunday. Sunday's just a meeting. Monday is mission. And if we aren't going to be on mission, then I think God says, don't worry about the meeting because I'll be somewhere else. So here's the question. And listen, I love weekend worship. I I love to preach to a crowd. The bigger it is, the more I love it. I love to sing as loud as I want and know that it doesn't bother anyone. But, But here's the question. Does it matter where we gather on Sunday if we don't love our neighbors on Monday. We need to scatter well. In the coming years, we will prioritize scattering well over gathering well. There's a verse in John 16, I ran into it during our COVID quarantine. It's Jesus speaking and he says to his friends, a time is coming, in fact has come, a time is coming, in fact it's here, a time has come when you will be scattered, each to your own home. Now, that was a different kind of scattering, right? But, but listen, this has happened before. God scatters his people so that they will go to people, broken, marginalized, treasures of God. He doesn't just go to the marginalized. He, he changes the margins. He, he brings the margins of life to the center of his attention. So we, we, often, we, we, just, we want God to shift his attention to us. And God says, I want you to shift your presence to the people who already have my attention, And if God's attention is in the margins of life, scatter yourself to the margins and be the light of the world there. They were scattered to their homes. I think the last 30 plus months, God has been scattering us to our homes. Why? Because he loves our neighbors even more than we do. Max Lucado challenges us. I love this. He challenges us to look at how the early church changed the world. He writes, without the aid of sanctuaries, church buildings, or clergy, they changed the world through the clearest of messages, the cross, and the simplest of tools, the home. I mean, isn't that the scene that Luke describes in Acts 2, 42 through 47? They devoted the early church, followers of Christ after Jesus' resurrection, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together. They had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all not just there, it was all to anybody who had need. And day in, and day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God, having favor with all the people, all their neighbors, all the community. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Now, I, I know it says they gathered in the temple. <laughs> But do you think they were doing Sunday church in the temple? Do you think the apostles were doing a lot of teaching in the Jewish temple about Jesus the Messiah rejected by the Jews? Were they singing hymns of worship to Jesus in the temple? Or was that happening at the home? Were they rubbering shoulders? Was was the temple kind of like their front yard mission? But but they were doing the church stuff at home. They were eating together and praying together. Were, Were those primarily temple activities or home activities? See, there was only one temple, and the day would come soon when the community synagogues were were not very welcoming places. Read the New Testament looking for the where of the church, and you'll find the what of a home. A primary tool of the early church was everybody's home. I mean, just let this picture saturate your mind. 
long before the church was housed in a structure. The structure of the church was a house. Long before the church had pulpits and play spaces. She had dinner tables and kitchens. One of my childhood heroes was a woman named Theda Krieger. She was the first missionary that I knew. A, a woman from Argentina who served the children of Argentina. In, in our little church of about 75 people, she was our main missionary that we supported. I, I remember just always experiencing a bit of awe when she would come and visit us. And, and our church missionaries were like the top echelon of Christians. To be a missionary was the highest calling a Christian could receive, higher than a pastor. Missionaries were the elite, the Navy SEALs of the church. And man, I, I'll tell you right now, she was a darkness bursting, light bringing missionary. Back in 1997, I actually reconnected with her when I went to Argentina to explore the work that God was doing through prayer evangelism, which is a lot like our front yard mission. Over time, I, I dug into a bit of her history and I found out that well over 200 churches were started through her ministry. And she shared the gospel with thousands of children. One of those young children was a man, you've probably heard his name, a man named Louis Palau, who went on to share the gospel with millions more people. And, and Louis said this about Theta. He said, she walked in the spirit, was filled with joy and humility, and she invested herself in my life and my family. He said, sometimes I still wake up at night and hear her voice. You've got to reach more children. Theta died in 2011 at the age of 102 with a legacy of light shining in the darkness that I can barely hope to match. She scattered well. Most of her mission took place in her home or someone else's. She had a front yard mission. She'd gather kids in her yard. She'd sit in someone's kitchen, not, not big crusades, no huge church, not by supernatural, miraculous encounters, but just moments of small, ordinary awe. What if some of the most awesome encounters with God most often begin around kitchen tables. So how are we going to get to our 2030 vision? We're going to scatter well. We're going to remind ourselves that Sunday morning gatherings are just a meeting. I love those meetings, but that's not church. Don't let me hear you saying you go to church on Sunday morning at this building. We're going to train missionaries. We're going to train missionaries who will take responsibility to be the church where you live, where I live and work and learn. We want to see missionaries in every neighborhood bringing church to every street. And we're going to work to see the movement of front yard missions spread throughout Central PA. In fact, if you don't know about it, we have a master class here on front yard missions. It's part of our connecting to our calling in Christ, our mission. And we'd love to see you take that master class. We're going to pray and fast for our hashtag, and we're going to scatter well. <laughs> what does that look like for you to be a part of a church that scatters well? Thanks for joining us, and uh, join the conversation that, that drops um, after this. And uh, I'd love to see you continuing to follow us in the State of the Church uh, vision series.